Hi, and welcome to a new tip today where it's all about how to read stack traces efficiently. Because I noticed some colleagues have problems, especially when there's nested, deep, and long stack traces. So let's find out how it should work. All right, so I'm in my own website's project, and as you can see, I'm in a Deo here, a find by the all fetch method, which is a query to a database. And uh, whenever I boot up the application, Spring Boot is validating that query and will or will not boot up depending on if that query is valid. And um, let's say I have uh, where cause ID equals ID. I'm just gonna say, well, so put in some nonsense in here. So it's not really ID anymore. So validation should fail. And I'm gonna boot up the application now uh, because it's gonna take a second. But then the question is, how easy is it gonna to be to read that stack trace that we're hopefully gonna see in a second when the application boots up? And as you can see here, it takes a second, right? And then I get a stack trace, which is actually fairly long. So when I scroll up and down here, you can see a couple of lines. So what am I gonna do now? Or what am I supposed to do now? And a quick rule of thumb, it's not the perfect way, but just a very quick rule. You wanna have, when you have a stack trace, quick look at the top, at the very top of the first line. You can ignore all these lines here in between actually, just ignore them. And you wanna have a look at the very bottom, uh, the last exception you can see in the log. And what you can actually see at the bottom is usually the root cause of the exception. So what was the actual problem? And it was a hibernate query exception. Could not resolve property FFHH ID of my cause object, which is fine because we just put it in here. Didn't make any sense. So that is actually fine. And then you can see that query exception, the root problem is taken and being wrapped in an illegal argument exception because it's bubbling up the layers through all my code. And the funny thing is also here, that's why I told you to ignore all these lines, is all these lines have grayed out line numbers and grayed out classes. And at least in IntelliJ, you can see if something is grayed out, it's actually library code. If something is blue, and I don't have any blue stuff in here apart from my bean names, but here all these lines, they aren't blue, it's all grayed out. The only blue line here is my own root application, the main method I just executed to run the application. So you can see it's all just library code and that's why you can actually ignore it. But again, when you scroll down the root cause, illegal argument exception, it gets bubble up, bubble up some more. And in the end, or not in the end, in between it ends up as a bean creation exception. That's right, because I'm trying, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create a DAO, a cause DAO. And obviously that query is broken, so Spring cannot create a DAO, which is why you get a bean creation exception at some point. But it doesn't stop here because you get later on an unsatisfied dependency exception. Because likely cause DAO isn't the first bean you're trying to create. Maybe there was a different bean you tried to create. It has a required auto wire property or field or whatever constructor argument. And that's why you get an exception saying unsatisfied dependency exception later on in your code. And that's why when you scroll up to the top and which is a bit, well, let's say it's a bit confusing whenever you have these huge spring stack traces that you might at the top, you might get an unsatisfied dependency exception, which is a bit weird, even though I have to say, you usually always find the error message in the very first line, but you need some time to inspect the code here because you get error creating bean with name web security config. What did we just do with the security config? Nothing. And you'll see unsatisfied dependency set content negotiation, content negotiation strategy, which has nothing to do with the actual root cause. But later on, because I couldn't create a couple of beans, everything bubbles up and then you end up with a problem in the web controller or web security config. But when you scroll to the very, very right, you should see the root cause because you see validation failed for query for method public abstract cause find by the all fetch. That is the actual problem. And uh, in, 
frameworks like Spring, because these exceptions bubble up and get converted, I almost call the, uh, the top level, or top exception you see here, like the manager's view of the exception. Like when you go to a burger place, you want to order a burger, but the oven is broken because some wire is not in place. So the wire is the root cause. But then at the end, you tell the cook, you tell the manager, you tell the guy at the till, and the guy at the till will tell the customer something else. He will just tell the customer, I don't know, the kitchen is broken exception or whatever, even though it's the wire, the root cause. Kitchen is broken is still true, and unsatisfied dependency is still true, but you'll have to have a look at the root cause. So that's why have a look at the top, at the very top, if you can find the exception. If it didn't get converted in the first line, which you can find here, right? Ignore the stuff in the middle, especially if it's library code, and have a look at the bottom where you should find the root cause. And that's all there is to reading stack traces. All right, that's it for today's trick. If you have any questions on reading stack traces and whatnot, just post them in the comment section below. Otherwise, tune in again next Monday for the next trick. Stay tuned.